video we're going to look at inverse proportion or indirect proportion. Watch the video on direct proportion before watching this video just to make sure that you understand all the key concepts. So watch out for in a question something like this A is inversely proportional to B or A varies inversely to B or indirectly to B or indirectly proportional. Okay so they're the things to watch out for to know if it's an inverse proportion question. Let's take a, have a look at an example now. So if I wrote A is inversely proportional to B, inversely proportional means that as one value increases, the other value decreases. So this time you write A, the proportional sign, and 1 over B. And then, whenever you want to get rid of the proportional sign, you write A equals K over B. Okay, because you're timesing this by K, just like before. Whenever you want to get rid of the proportional sign, you times it by K, the constant of proportionality. Now let's think about this. As b would get bigger, so if you divide by a larger and larger and larger number, the result would be smaller. So as b increases, a would decrease. So that's why it's 1 over b. Okay. So whenever you see inversely proportional, you put 1 over whatever it is inversely proportional to. Let's have a look at an example. Okay. p is inversely proportional to q. When p is 100, q is equal to 32. Express p in terms of q. So in other words, get the formula where it's p equals. So P is inversely to inversely proportional to Q. So you write P proportional to 1 over Q, whenever it's inversely proportional to Q. Get rid of the proportional sign, so write P equals K, the constant of proportionality, divided by Q. And then substitute in the numbers. So 100 equals K divided by 32. So then times by 32, so you get K is equal to 3,200. So the formula would become, whenever you put this k back in, so the, the answer to the question, expressing p in terms of q, would be p equals 3200 divided by q. So whenever you find the constant of proportionality, that's your formula. Just like in direct proportion, inversely proportional can I also have stuff like the square of x, the cube of x, the square root of x, and so on. So, it says, why is inversely proportional to the square of x? So y is proportional inversely, so 1 over the square of x, x squared. So y equals k over x squared. When y equals 3, x equals 2. So whenever y equals 3, x equals 2. So you get 3 equals k divided by 4. So times to get k equals 12. So this formula here would become y equals 12 divided by x squared. And then the question says, find the value of y whenever x equals 4. So you just put 4 into here. So you get y equals 12 divided by 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, so 12 divided by 16. And let's just cancel down this fraction. They're both in the 4 times tables. So 3 over 4, so 3 quarters. So it's just like direct proportion. Make sure you've watched that video first. Uh, the only thing is you're putting k on the numerator and the you know, whatever direct inversely proportional to on the denominator and you just solve like before. The last example is a bit of a wordy question. It says the number of days, d, to complete a project is inversely proportional to the number of people who work on the project. Well, it makes sense. As more people work on the project, it'll take less time to complete. The project takes 18 days to complete if 150 people work on it. Find an equation connecting D and P. And um, the second part of the question actually is, um, find the number of people, find um, the number of people, P, if the time taken to complete it, D, is equal to 100 days. Okay, so let's do that now. So the first part is, let's write down the formula. So D, capital D, is proportional inversely proportional to the number of people uh, working on it. It's just the number of people working on it. It's not squared or anything, so just 1 over P, like so. Get rid of the proportional sign, so D is equal to K over P. And then um, 18 days to complete if 150 people work on it, so K over 150. So then times by 150 to find K. So feel free to use your calculator to do that. So 150 times 18 is equal to 2,700. So then we get our formula. We put that back in to get our formula. So D equals 2,700 divided by P. 
Fantastic. So it says find the number of people needed. So find P if D equals 100. So D equals, uh, sorry, 100 equals 2,700 divided by P. So I suppose you can think about this in two ways. Um, you can either divide it by just 27 to get 100. So P is equal to 27. Or you could multiply both sides by P to get 100. To get 100 P equals 2,700. And then divide by 100 to get P equals 27. So to find how, long, how many people you need to build it in 100 days, it'll be 27 people.